Today in Filament's Folly, we're going to paint this Valentine's Day Bulbasaur I designed. STLs are below, let's get started. Designed it with a pocket in the back to be filled with candy or other things for your sweetheart. As you can see here, we have a 7% fill on the rose, the leaves, and the body, and a 40% fill on the plug, all with a 0.12 layer height. Do not use supports on the rose, but everything else gets tree supports. So here I'm going ahead and I am painting on wood filler, Elmer's wood filler, and I'm just putting down a base coat just to get it smooth. So that way it'll hide a lot of those layer imperfections that we have. Later on, we're gonna go ahead and texture this as well. I'm using my masket brush for this because it's kind of rough on brushes and it's kind of a, a throwaway brush for me. I like using this stuff because it's non-toxic. You can use it inside or in the winter when you don't good ventilation. It dries quickly and it doesn't smell bad. All right, now that it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and just dapple it on to create texture. So I'm literally just pushing it into the brush or into the model and then pulling it back off just to give it that rough texture. And I'm going to do this over the entire model, except for where the eyes and hearts are, because I want those to be smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to use spray uh, prime and filler for these, because I do want these to be smooth, and it's just quicker. And now I'm just gonna start airbrushing them. I'm kind of using this airbrush kind of like you would use a uh, rattle can spray paint, but this gives me a little bit more control. We're not doing a lot of detail with the airbrushing on today, but it really helps for getting good coverage smooth quickly. Now you're still gonna notice some lines in here. I will be cleaning these up off camera, but this allows me to see where those are and stuff like that. So you can see now that texture that we have that I put on there with the wood filler looks really good. And you can still, like I said, see a couple spots. I want to be sanding those and filling them off camera. And there we go. I'm putting in a little bit of shading. Now my camera shoots red a little hot, so it doesn't quite look that neon. And I'm adding multiple layers of pink in different angles just to kind of give it some modeling and texturing. And now on to just my flat brush you saw me use last time. And I'm literally just going to be putting in white for the eyes. I think my camera angles are getting better. I think they'll be even better next time. Now one thing I didn't notice until after I'd done this part is I had lost some of the definition around the left pupil. So that would be a little bit difficult to paint later on. And I'm just going to go in with the flat brush and do a base coat in all of these hearts. And then go through and do a second coat. And then I'm gonna come in with a number six brush and just do the detail work around the edges. Same with the eyes. get 
paint on the model like it just did there, you could easily just wash it off with a clean brush. All right, so I'm doing a little bit more shading here on the rows. I'm gonna do a darker bottom and then like a lighter pink top just to go ahead and give it some definition and give it some, so it's not so flat really. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the leaves. The center will be darker and the bottom will be darker, but you know, that way it'll give it a little bit of definition. Now I'm using a much nicer brush here just because I really want a lot of precision right around that line. This is also, I think, I believe a number six, but it's a little bit more of an expensive brush. And then I go back to my flat brush after I get that edge in. Now I'm gonna end up dry brushing these eyes and getting them a little bit of definition. Although my phone died, so you didn't really get a chance to see that. And then I'm using just a marker to go ahead and draw in the mouth just for a little bit of definition here. And it's time to paint the pupils. One thing I do want to invest in is uh, latex gloves. Just so that way when I get paint in my hands like this, I can just swap out the pair instead of washing my hands. I think it'll make it a lot quicker. Because I did have a few times where I got spots on the model because my hands had paint on them. So as you can see here, I have a beautiful ring and some M&Ms in the back for my wife. You can put anything you want in here. It doesn't have to be expensive. It's really up to your imagination. I've also included a smaller version of him, as you can see here on the right, without a pocket in the back, if you just want to go ahead and give the Bulbasaur itself as a gift. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. If you can go ahead, the STLs are down below. You can download this and make them yourself. If you can give me a thumbs up here and give me a like on Thingiverse, it really helps other people discover not only this channel, but the creations I make on Thingiverse. Thank you for watching Filament's Folly, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.